1945, Major General Sir Nigel, also known as Noel Holmes, KBECBMC, said, without Southampton, we could not have done D-Day. Yet the greatest period in the history of the port is either neglected or ignored. With the forthcoming 80th anniversary of D-Day, it is intended, largely with the help of contemporary film, to put the record straight so that the courage and sacrifice of those who embarked at Southampton is not forgotten. During World War II, the Dieppe Raid in 1942 was a tragic loss of life. But it would be a greater tragedy if the loss was for nothing. The disaster showed both sides the importance of a port to the infantry if they were not going to be thrown back into the sea. The Axis High Command learnt this lesson well and made the defence of their ports a priority, as demonstrated at Cherbourg during the D-Day landing. But the Allies were also not slow in learning the lessons of Dieppe. They too realised that if they could not capture a port on D-Day, they would have difficulty in establishing a foothold in enemy territory. The solution was to bring their own port, and so was born the two floating Mulberry harbours that would be towed across the channel in the wake of the D-Day landings. But this was only one of the lessons learnt by the Allies at D-Day as well as the need to disembark as many troops, this had to be achieved as quickly as possible. To solve this problem, the Allies invented a bridge across the channel in the form of specially designed landing craft. Thousands were built to facilitate the continuous flow of men and material necessary to establish beachheads. Today, because they are no longer needed, they have almost disappeared, but a factor in the delay was the lack of landing craft and their significance at the time was illustrated when the keel of an aircraft carrier under construction was replaced with six new landing craft. The major ports along the south coast were all used to accommodate large troop transports, supply vessels and warships of the supporting naval forces. But these ports would not be sufficient to load men and equipment onto all the available vessels and bottlenecks were developed. The construction of the hards was shared between Admiralty and the War Office with work delegated to civilian contractors hired by the military. They were built specifically to serve two types of assault vessel, landing ship tanks, LSTs, or landing craft tanks, LCTs. In the film, LSTs are seen at hard S1 close to berth 101 of the new or western docks. Initially, this film was captioned Weymouth, but it has a high tidal range restricting its use as an invasion port. The unique double high tide at Southampton meant more time to load vessels. As well as tanks essential for the support of infantry, construction equipment can also be seen taken on board. Although the Germans invented Blitzkrieg, the US put great stress on the importance of ground support aircraft. For example, the 365th unit at Bewley Airfield flying Thunderbolts. Giant earth moving equipment was necessary as soon as possible after the landings so that the Allies could build their own airfields in France to support their troops. One of the misconceptions regarding the constructions of the Hards is that port facilities could not be shared between the Allies. But although initially there were teething problems on D Day, the tactical needs of those on the beaches took priority. This principle was illustrated at another of the hards at Southampton found at Northam, close to the present day soccer stadium. Hard S4 could accommodate two smaller LCTs or landing craft tank vessels. These vessels would be given orders from the headquarters in South Western House to proceed along the River Itchen to Chesil Bay just below Northam Bridge where a taxi rank system was employed involving landing craft ready to embark. Another film shows GIs proceeding to the same hard. They were intended for Omaha Beach. Hards were not simply used for embarking troops, but also disembarking returning prisoners of war and wounded. 
This film shows the now reclaimed S3 yard outside the platform tavern. At the time of D-Day, returning craft would carry a red or black flag warning those ashore if those aboard were wounded or not. The last hard in Southampton on D-Day was S2 outside the medieval wool house. As can be seen from the clothes the GIs are wearing in the film, this was taken in December 1944. Because of Southampton's proximity to the continent, its excellent facilities and the experienced army port organisation, these hards were in operation until the end of the hostilities.